So, we want to make a Jacko tool for the lathe. And this one I'm going to make for my little BTM lathe. First we need a set of highly sophisticated machine drawings. And here we go. We want a bit of brass that we're going to make round and put the little indents in for doing the actual pivot polishing. That needs to have to be threaded or have a bit on it to be threaded. We need a bit to support this bit on. We need a thumb screw or a screw of some description to attach this to this. And we need a shaft to suit the lathe we're going to be using threaded to go in this hole here which will be threaded. This will be a hole, a slot rather, just to give a little bit of adjustment to the actual Jacko drum. And I'm going to thread this onto here so that I can replace this and use it on different lathes. So, let's go and drag out some bits of scrap and start making one. Alright, so these are the bits I've sorted out for it. I've got a bit of, <clears throat> not sure actually if it's brass or bronze. It's been kicking about for a long time. It came in a box of crap I got. So I shall cut a little bit off of that. Mount it in the lathe and do what I'm going to do with that. I've got a brand spanking new piece of 8mm silver steel here which I'm going to use for the shaft. doesn't really need to be this good but it's what I've got that's about the right size. And a bit of some sort of mild steel, I'm not sure what it is. But I shall cut a little bit off of this. Mill it. Drill it. Tap it. Put a slot in it. And this this is the bit I'm going to make first, and then I'll make everything else off of this. Right, I'll cut a bit off of this and take it to the mill. I shall probably just do all these bits and speed it up so you can just see what goes on. Okay, so here's all the bits. This is the bit of silver steel that will go through the lathe tower stock to, to actually hold it into the lathe. This is going to be the bit of steel that's going to be fitted like so and then I'll put the slot in here this will obviously be turned down quite a bit more but wherever the centre of all this comes will be where the centre of the half rounds for the pivots to go in to be polished will be there and what I've decided I think I'll do is when I get around to doing this I'll drill it and tap it use a bit of this 8mm steel right through it and I'll use that when I'm to put in the chuck when I'm going to do the drilling but more about that later first of all I'm just going to square this up slot it, drill it and tap this for an eight, an M8 tap, an eight, an, excuse me, an M8 thread. So I'll get on with that. So I've drilled and tapped the, the hole there for the shaft and now I'm just milling the slot. Right, here it is, I've trimmed it up, it's going to be 38 millimetres from, for the whole length of it, and that will give me a 25 mil diameter to the centre of this when it's mounted on its arbor in the Emi Watchmaker's lathe, but I'll go into that in a bit more detail in a minute. 
I'm just going to mount it on an arbor now, an 8mm arbor in the lathe and just radius these ends so I'll get it on the lathe so I've got it mounted on the lathe, I've got the lathe set to its lowest speed I've got a, a roughing bit in the lathe, I'm just going to try and turn it <coughs> just to radius on the end of the ends I'm going to take very small steady cuts with this and even that might be too much I decided to speed it up a bit. I'm giving it some support from the tail stock <clears throat> and see how I get on with that now. Well, I'm just going to <clears throat> I'm just going to speed it up and give it a final pass. And there it is. I mean, the radius is a purely decorative, really. Okay, that's ready for polishing. And I shall probably blue it at the end, but um, that's it. All looking good. Right, I think we need to go back to the drawing board. Right, here we are, back at the drawing board. With our accurate set of machine drawings. Hold on, let's do it from this now. So I'll start off with that at approximately 30 millimeters. I'll put it in the um, rotary table and then start drilling the, the holes I want for the pivot rests. Oh, I've got the bronze mounted in the lathe, I'm just going to face it drill it and tap it I had a bit of a problem when I was um, drilling and tapping it, or drilling it. It um, knocked it a bit loose in the chuck, it, but I refaced it while it was in there. And as it's going up on this arbor, and I've got a little bit of room to play with, it's not too sad. It's going to be a bit wobbly now. I'll just square it up, face this side off. I've just got it mounted in this little arbor again that I used for the. 
for the mounting bit but uh, I'm just going to face this up now get it as close to 30 as I can So here we are, this is the uh, the drum so far. Take it over, put it in the rotary table, on the mill, find a centre, and then start drilling the holes. Okay. Right, so this is the setup I've got for uh, drilling the holes that will be the pivot rests. I've simply mounted my little rotary table on the milling machine. Uh, this is my small one, it's got a three jaw chuck in it. I've got a bit of bronze mounted in the chuck, I've got a little bit of wood underneath it just so I don't drill into the chuck. I've centered it just by putting the drill the drill bit in the in a collet upside down and it's the drill bit I think I can't remember what it is 6.8 drill bit that you drill to drill the uh, hole for tapping um, and it just is centered and then it will just be a case of coming round with a rotary table, drilling the holes where I want. When I've taken it out, the bolt ring circle, well, <clears throat> the diameter of the circle, the 25mm diameter that I was going to do, I'll be drilling it. I'll use collets, because I'm going to start off with a 1mm bit, and gradually go up. I'm probably going to put about 30 holes in this, um, and I want to leave a bit of space for anything that might come unusual in the future. I mean, there are other ways you can do it. I mean, um, let me just pause that a minute. I mean, here's a view of the DRO. Um, I've got that centred with a drill, like I said, so I can just zero everything out. And then, either on the X or the Y axis, it wouldn't, it doesn't matter which way around you do it. You bring it out to the 12.5 mil. Like that, lock the table off. And then just using the rotary table and I want to space them as I want to space them rather than having a, a, a set distance between each hole but this um, this DRO since I've had this I mean this is a game changer this, this is like having a wizard in your workshop I mean if you if I wanted you could this is the uh, bolt ring button up here I'll show you you could if I press that it just it asks for the centre to start with we, we all, we're already centred, well, we're not now, but if we were centred, <coughs> then we just come down that, I mean the diameter happens to be 25, you just put the diameter of the circle in you want, come down again, number of holes you wanted, say we wanted to put 30 holes in there, enter that, come down to the next one, you can if you want come off at an angle, um, we wouldn't need to do that, so it would be zero in this case. The end angle, because it's we, we're doing the 360, so that would obviously be the 360. And that's it. You just move the tables to zero out these two, two positions when they get to zero. You drill your hole, then you go on to hole two, zero them out. Hole three, zero it out, etc, etc. But... Uh, 
I do, I love this DRA, it does so many things, it makes it makes life a lot easier. But anyway, enough about that. I'm gonna get on and drill these now. Yeah, so I'm gonna get on and drill it. I've moved that now to the, the 12 and a half, and if I bring that down you'll see it comes down. And that will be the center of the 25 millimeter diameter circle. And then I'll take it round with a rotary table, spacing it as I see fit. I'm just going to take that back to the zero. And <clears throat> I'm not going to show you drilling need all these holes because it's going to take a while. I'll, I'll probably do a little bit, even speed it up. I think this would be a bit of a boring thing to watch. So I'm going to get on and drill the holes. I'm going to change this out now for a one millimetre collet and drill the first hole, which is a one millimetre hole. Alright, <clears throat> I've changed the uh, camera around a bit, to try and get you to see what, what's going on here. Um, this is the one I'm most worried about. This is the little one millimetre drill. I'm going to give it a go. I'll be amazed if I get through this without breaking the drill, but we'll give it a go. go oh year of little faith that one's through all right only another 29 to go so i'll just start drilling and changing this out and spending the next hour or two doing it all right so i'll ask five see how long it takes me to do them all all right coming up for the last one Well, I didn't get anywhere near the 30 that I thought I was going to get in there. I spaced them out probably a bit too much, but I don't mind. Tommy Bart with that. So there she is. And I've done the holes from one millimetre to four millimetres, done 1.1, 1.2, 1.8, anyway, whatever. Um, there they are. Now we've got to go up to the lathe and turn this down so only half of them are exposed. Alright, here we are back at the lathe. Just knock that out of the way. So now I'm just going to turn this down to the 25mm diameter and that should reveal the pivot rests.
And that is that. So that's him. Needs a bit of cleaning up. Little pivot file, little uh, files into these. But there is the Jacko drum. These should all be pretty much half of what the old was they started out. And them sizes going from one millimeter, that was 1.2, 1 1.4. 1 1.6, 1 1.8, 2, 2.3, 2.6, 3, 3, and oh, anyway, they go up to 4 mil, which will be pretty much any any size of arbor you'd need on an ordinary clock until you get up to the sort of barrels and things. But I'll clean that up and we'll have another look at it. I'm going to face this off a bit as well. Right, so here we have assembled the parts for the Jacko tool. This piece I've just made, it's a it's simple, simple case of turning a bit of 8mm silver steel down to the sides of the towel stock on my BTM lathe and putting an 8mm thread onto the end so that it fits onto the carrier, which is all I've done with this is polished it up a little bit. And that simply screws into there. The reason I've made that so you can screw it in and out is I want to put a little MT0 Morse, Morse taper one for my Paris lathe so I can use it on the Paris lathe as well. The uh, Jacko drum has just had the centre fitted. It's just still centre, tapped and threaded so that it fits through the carrier on the drum. Got, it's got weight, I mean you'd never need that much adjustment on it, but um, that goes on to there, then I just made a little brass thumb screw, fitted it onto a bit of 6mm threaded rod, that simply screws into, into the back of the Jacko drum. And then that releases it to change whatever one you want and you have got the little bit of height adjustment which should it be necessary it would take up anywhere in the in the um, indents at some point in the future. Okay, let's go and stick it on the lathe and see what it looks like. So here we are at the lathe, the Jacko tool. It slides into the end of the headstock. Nip it up. I've got a wheel in here that I'm going to be polishing. Bring it all into position. And there it is, the Jacko tool in position, ready to polish the pivot on this uh, wheel out of the strike of the clock I'm working on. Um, if you want. Alright, so let's get on with uh, polishing the pivot. In this little block, I've got some diamond powder and some rouge mixed up. That's just the powders, they're just mixed up with uh, a very small bit of clock oil. And a double ended pivot polisher. One end is very, very fine, and the other end is very, it's like a very, very fine file. And we start off with the file end, and I'll start by putting a A little bit of the diamond powder on and 
slow even strokes a little bit more powder on Should be plenty with the diamond powder. And now the same again with a little bit of rouge. Got to keep the file very, very level while you're doing this. And what this end of the file will do is just impart some very, very, very fine file marks. And now I'm going to swap the file around and use the actual burnishing end. I'll leave the uh, bit of bit of rouge paste there and just give it a polish with that now do this slightly faster and apply a little bit more pressure to it and what we're trying to do now <clears throat> is just by friction and using the burnishing tool to smooth out the very fine file marks the other end of the polisher, the other polisher would have left on there. And then to finish. Put a drop of clock oil on there. And again, with the same bit of the file that I was using, there's still got a little bit of rouge in it, but that'll get taken away. I'll spin it quite fast and put an slightly more pressure on it and let it go for a little bit longer. And this really is the sort of final burnish. And what you're trying to achieve here is to actually warm the, the metal of the pivot up and spread the imperfections out. And what this will also do, and why I think it's a lot better than some of the um, other methods for pivot, pivot polishing, is this will case harden the pivot only on the very very outside of it but it will give it a, a shiny almost like a plated finish the very very outside couple of microns will be case hardened and it will last for a very long time and just to finish I just twist the burnisher and just give the shoulder a slight polish I'll just give the ends a slight wobble just to polish the end just for appearance and make sure there's no rags on the end of the pivot.
Okay, I'll move the camera see if I can get a close up of that and you can see the before and after. Okay, now that's it. The Jacko tool finished. And the uh, pivot ready to go back in the clock now. Thank you for watching. And uh, I'll see you again in the next one.